Good morning, everybody. My name is Keith Salmon from Keith Salmon Coaching, and uh, this is the next installment of the Million Dollar Story series. Uh, happy Wednesday to everyone. I hope you're doing well. Um, I am in Santa Monica, California, and from Vermont, uh, Amy Lewis, a transformation coach, transformation coach for visionary leaders, is joining us to have a conversation about what she does. And uh, I want to have hear about her million dollar story as well. Good morning, Amy. Thanks for Good morning, coming on. Keith. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited to be here. How are well, you today? I, I'm doing well. We were just talking offline a second ago about the, um, you know, the fires. The West Coast fires are. are uh, uh, I'm I'm safe. I'm in Santa Monica, California. And my son is up in the Portland area, pretty hard hit up there. Uh, but I think some of our West Coast smoke has reached the East Coast, which is kind of frightening. I heard that it was detected in, in uh, Hawaii and even over in Europe. Mm. Uh, it's amazing. They haven't seen things like this since, uh, well, for a while. They were they were describing it as compared to when uh, Mount St. Helens went, went off wow. a, few, a few years ago. Yep, and I was just sharing with that with you offline that even here in Vermont, friends of ours that are going out for sunrises are seeing this really glowy orange all the way, you know, across the country. So we're wishing you well, everybody that is in danger's way. We're sending you lots of love and uh, good vibes for safety. Yeah, you got to be safe. You got to be safe. So um, this is the Million Dollar Story series. So I call it the Million Dollar Story because I believe that all of us have a million dollar story. A lot of us don't know that we have one. A lot of us uh, are looking for it. They may have a burning desire inside of themselves to find, you know, that that thing that's just going to get them out there and and do what their what their lifelong purpose has been for. So I, I'm my my goal in this series is to get enough people out on in front of enough people, sort of like it's kind of a numbers game. If you hear the right story from the right person at the right time, it's gonna hit you right square between the eyes and, and you're gonna get out of yourself and change the world. It's really that simple and I believe that, I believe that wholeheartedly. So Amy being a transformation coach for visionary leaders is speaking my language just in her title. So why don't you tell me a little bit about how you, um, why don't you tell me a little bit about your system, what you teach, uh, <clears throat> who who you teach, X Y, you know, et cetera. That'd oh, be great. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Keith. And a lot of people say, you know, they they say, what is a transformation coach? What is a visionary leader? And so let's start there, so that you know, if this is your story, you know it, and if maybe it's not, right? A vi I consider a visionary leader anyone who has a bigger vision than themselves to make that dent in the universe one way or another. I generally do work with frustrated entrepreneurs, CEOs, um, executive leaders, et cetera. And we'll talk a little bit more specifically about who those people are. But I also work with teachers who want to have a bigger impact on their students and then create programs and carry that out to the greater community. So don't discount yourself, don't disqualify yourself as a leader. When you hear that term leader, sometimes people are like, oh, well, I'm not a leader. You are a leader of your own life and that is where we start. So we are all leading ourselves and we all, and myself included, I'm sure you've had this experience, we sort of need to check ourselves and say, am I, you know, am I really living the way I want to? Am I showing up the way I want to? And most people haven't thought about that for a long time because they're so focused on these rules that they feel society's putting on them or the boxes other people have created that they feel they have to fit in. So these visionary leaders have these big visions. They want to make this, this really great impact and they're still in these boxes. So they're not able to get there. So what uh, you just mentioned being stuck. So does that make sense so far? Does that answer your question about the visionary leadership part? Absolutely. All right. Every, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And the, the transformation piece is what I saw happening. And of course, I went through this myself, is that you can look like you have it all from the outside, right? So the clients that come to me, they they're they look like that. They're making the business owners are doing six figures and more. I have corporate clients that are doing multiple six and seven and want to leave that and come to me. I have people that lost multiple million dollars, $3.3 million businesses in COVID and are pivoting. So it's really, 
And like I said, I have a kindergarten teacher who is now pivoting with COVID and now needs to, to transform herself. So it's, you've got to lead yourself. And although my messaging is to frustrated, heart-centered entrepreneurs who really want to reconnect with themselves. So that's what I do. This transformation comes from the first thing that we do, Keith, is something that I call, it's a three-phase system, IV. So we kind of go backwards, right? We reverse engineer, we do IV, then we do CPR, then we do the SOS. We usually think of it the other way around, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So with the IV phase, when these leaders come in and they, they have this feeling of being lost and disconnected, we've really got to identify what do you want and why? So how do you want to feel? What are your core values? There's no cookie cutter for this, like what, where we're gonna go. There's a very clear framework, but it's different for everyone. So that is why this piece is so important because if I don't know what you want and why I can't guide you there. Right. So yeah, that's, that. go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna say that voice that's hard, so hard to find sometimes and it's, um, is, is, is there, it's there. And I think like you talked about it, I, I went through it myself looking for that voice. I called my, I know we are, we're, we're trained in marketing to go narrow, narrow, narrow down our audience, but you just mentioned all walks of life that kind of come through. And, and I have that same thing. It's, it's just a matter of, is, is it a personal trainer? Is it a uh, physical therapist? Is it a registered nurse with a cousin? You know, it's, there's right. just, it just comes and it just depends on when they hit that point in their life and, and when right. they um, know how to ask for help. Sometimes they they walk into a place and they they just they're seeking. I it, to me it's the seeker demographic. Mm -hmm. I com completely get that. And you know, starting from a place where they didn't necessarily think they needed to start is is interesting because it's true. The expectation that everything's one size fits all does not necessarily apply at all. No, and I saw I I. I want to remember who I saw in a group the other week, somebody said, you know, um, cookie cutters are for baking. And I love that because it, and I say not so much for creating an inspired aligned business and life, right? Because everyone's different. So I have some people who have this vision of creating a multi-billion dollar empire and then other people who want to work with a small group and have maybe a couple of team members and work at a much higher level. So that first piece, and we dig deep and, you know, it is, there are tears and it is brain stretching because we're, we dig into what do you, how do you really want to feel? And off the cuff people, oh, I want to be happy. I want to be filled. I want to uh, fulfilled. I want to feel free. And I do, it does come down to freedom and fulfillment. That's why I have the freedom and fulfillment accelerator. That's our group. That's our program. Um, it's the same approach. We just, it depends where you fall in. So we dig deeper though. What does that mean to you? Where do you experience that in your life? Where are you not aligned with that? So really that stuck feeling, um, even if you are doing it all, right? Even if you're making the six, seven figures and you got the relationships and the money and the house and the kids and whatever is your thing. So I, I'm saying things that might not be important to you. Um, you could still feel disconnected and unfulfilled. And then the cycle becomes that these folks end up feeling guilty, right? Because they've got all these things. And so why should I feel bad? And so mm -hmm. that's really where we come in and can say, no, that's, that's great. You can still do that. I had a fitness studio. I was serving everyone else. They got great results. We had a great fitness family. It was rocking. But guess who was suffering? It was me. I wasn't seeing my family. I wasn't taking care of myself. And, and we closed before COVID a few years ago and took it online so that I could find that and now do helped other people to do that as well. Oh, I can, I can relate to that part. Um, I had businesses for a long time. I come from uh, advertising and film. And mm -hmm. uh, so I, I was, was a film, I still am a film editor and worked on some projects that would just take me out. And you think you would, you know, you, you're living this uh, artist sort of life. You know, you're making, you know, you're making money, but then you're ignoring your real life. You know, real life kind right. of doesn't come into play and sort of looks good on the outside, like, like you say. And sometimes it's like, 
you know, I made the mistake. It was like a, the best creative project I've ever worked on, the most important project I ever worked on. But I, I was asked over and over to recreate that in the feeling because it was so dark and so um, yep. so tough. But but uh, life changing for for me and for the people involved. And and then uh, what people didn't know is that the expense for me personally was uh, how deep I had to go to make it any good. And they right. thought that they thought that I I just love being I, I just I just love doing that I loved doing it but it was it was harmful it was harmful yeah, to, to me and everyone around me and then gosh you know you, you get on those projects and we don't get to, uh, you know we have at least in my experience I had to service like say one set of clients for one like a year sometimes right. and then you're just out of circulation you come out. And it's like, what happened? Where'd my life right. go? Mm -hmm. Like what just happened? And so that's really one of the key pieces. So I talk a lot about gaining crystal clarity. And mm -hmm. we do that by digging deep and really going into each individual. Like real, And most people haven't done that because we think we need to hustle and grind. We think we need to prove ourselves. And it takes time to undo those thoughts and understand that actually there is ease and flow. Now, I remember not believing that or I remember understanding the concept and not being there. Um, but I am here to tell you that it is possible and what, I, what the sort of diagnosis, if you will, is that it's a, it's a lack of alignment. So you're taking action, you're doing things, you're getting results by pushing and it doesn't feel fulfilling because it's not really in alignment with, with who you truly are at the core. So gaining that crystal clarity and that IV phase is so important mm -hmm. and then we help with creating meditations visualizations so that like you said you're in that dark place and you're surrounded by and you're inundated and you're immersed in it well we want to do the opposite now we know how you want to feel so we're going to create this these things for you to immerse in how you want to feel that you're going to be able to tap in when you're not ready to do it yet on your own and then we take it a step further. But that right. first part is identifying that and then learning how to saturate into it before you have the things you want. Mm -hmm. Could you do us a, a huge favor? You know, I, I know that there's like every day there's people that come into our space and they're looking, like I said before, it's like kind of the seekers. And, yeah. and they hear words um, that don't really click. They're not, they're sort of the, the, the jargon that we've invented, I think, mm -hmm. to a certain extent. So alignment is one of those words. Um, I had discussion with some people that were new recently and they, they couldn't put their finger on that. And, you know, it's just one of those, maybe if you told us what that really meant in terms of, it sounds like you're, you're, you're saying in your lane, you're lined up with, with what you believe, it's your values. Yeah, but why don't you tell us what that means for the That's newcomer? That's a great question, Keith, because you're absolutely right. Like when, as we learn things and then it becomes part of who we are and, and how we talk every day, it's easy to forget that people are coming in and are like, what? Alignment? I thought that was like for my tires. Um, so it is, but the alignment, a really good way for a newcomer to tell whether you're in alignment or out, whether you know what alignment <clears throat> excuse me, is or not, is your emotional guidance system. So how do you feel? If you are feeling stressed out, overwhelmed, angry, un at disease, you are out of alignment. If you are feeling happy and you are feeling in the moment and you're like, oh my gosh, that is in alignment. So when we talk about alignment, and again, this is why we start with that crystal clarity, because without that clarity of like what in that world is alignment, what we look at with alignment is who are you at the core? What are your core beliefs? So you might just be like, I don't even know, mm -hmm. right? Some people say, you know, um, honesty, integrity, and you don't need to come up with a word right now. So when you're watching right now, I invite you to spend some time, some quiet time, turn off all your electronics and really sit down with a piece of paper, not your phone, a piece of paper and an actual pen and start to just brainstorm what is important to you when you meet a friend and you're going to interact with something and decide if they're going to come into your world and you're going to you're going to interact with that person. What's important to you in a friend? What's important to you in an interaction with, with a coach or somebody that you're going to invest with? What's important to you with the clients that are coming your way to make you want to do business with them? All of those things are going to make up your values. 
So you want to look at those because there's no way that, that alignment piece is if I say that being honest is one of my values and yet I am I am not telling either a client or an employee what that there's an issue and I'm too scared to tell them I'm out and you feel yucky about it it's because you're not in alignment with that value of honesty so you that's really all it is is understanding what's important to you and how you want to show up in the world and then how you want to feel on a regular basis so for me after I did all the work and there's a we spend a lot of time on this and sometimes people that have done some of this before will take about a week um, that's short. Some people, you know, new, brand new people will, we will do other things as well, but they are going to take longer to really come up with how is it that you want to feel. For me, it came down to freedom, fulfillment, and fun. So for me, freedom is I can set my own schedule. That doesn't mean we don't have appointments. It just means that my daughter has soccer and my husband has a mountain biking accident. I can arrange my schedule and make sure I can drive her. So I have flexible hours. That's really important to me, right? So that's freedom for me. Freedom to, I live in Vermont, we ski, we bike, we do all this great stuff. I wanna make sure that I allow time in my schedule for that, that I have that freedom. I also want freedom in defining who I wanna work with and what, because as much as I'm vet, those people are vetting me, I'm vetting them. So that's the, I'm just trying to give you a little example of what does that freedom mean, right? Mm -hmm. How do I, where do I feel free in my schedule? I feel free on my mountain bike. So it might be different for you, probably will be. And then the fulfillment piece and the fun, I'm happy to share examples, but I don't want to take up the entire time. When you finally identify with crystal clarity, what your values are like, who do I want to be and how do I want to feel? Then when you feel those emotions, that discord, you it's it's okay. You don't beat yourself up. You can just go, hmm, where am, where am I out of alignment? Am I living these values? Am I, you know, how, why am I not feeling these things? Why am I feeling these things? Now, you're human. You're always going to have sadness. You're always going to probably have anger pop up at some point. So don't worry about it, just use it to guide you so that you can be in alignment with your values and feelings. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. Thank you, Anubi. And if you're watching and it doesn't make sense, throw a question in because we'll be happy to pop back in and just, you know, give a little bit more detail. Cause again, like you said, we, you know, this has kind of become a part of who we are and we want to absolutely help you to understand so that you can benefit and just have that business and life you adore. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, uh, it's that feeling that you feel like something's off. You kind of can go through a checklist of how things are feeling and what, and usually there's a pretty good explanation, you know, Mm-hmm. Uh, and it doesn't mean we can always catch it at the moment. And a lot of the times at first you're like, oh, I just behave that way or, you know, and oh, so here, then you can start to look at, well, what happened right before that? You know, so mm -hmm. that so there's a lot of things you can do so that you can sort of switch that mindset, but you've got to know where you want to be first. And then we can visualize and then take it into actual practice. Right. I think there's a physical component too, uh, but, you know, in terms of say like right now we're in this a pandemic, which everybody, you know, I'm a, I'm a six day a week power yoga person mm. and, and then I'm not that right now. And it, you know, when it's when you say you're in it, you don't know it. And you, you know, if your brain chemistry takes a little hit because you're not exercising, it's like, why do I feel like, why did I, why am I such, such a mood, you know? Right. Well, I, um, why am I not sleeping? Why am I, you know, all those kinds of things where you go, um, and, and when it's happening to you, it's happening at such a gradual pace, you don't realize it. And then you're in it, you're inside a box. You know? mm -hmm. And that self-care is so important. And I know people hear that all the time. And I'm like you, I actually just went back Saturday to the yoga studio and I was a 6 a.m. -er you know, Monday through Friday, I went Saturday, Sunday, sometimes I skip Sunday, but I, you know, it's hot yoga and hot Pilates. And, you know, that was part of my routine. And um, also like, I didn't realize the social piece that even though you're really not socializing the connections of practicing together. So I totally get that. And that's something to know too. Like it might be that, okay, well, 
that piece is important to me. I'm not able to do what I was doing. So that's, I'm not feeling on top of my game. So what can I do in place of that for now? It's not ideal. Right. What's it? So the choice A is no longer a choice. You know, we got to take plan B, which has been difficult for sure. So that's, yeah. don't think for a minute, this is a suggestion for beating yourself up. This is really a lifelong process and figuring these things out allows you to draw in the clients, make the money, have the relationships, have the health. And I know it can sound all pie in the sky. That's why we truly marry the woo woo with the science and the strategy, because it is, we've got to get this. And then we move into phase two, which is CPR, create it, practice it, ritualize it. Because it's all great to identify and visualize. But if we don't then actually take action, it's just, it's not going to change. So action may be noticing your thought patterns, but it's also going to be reaching out to people who are your ideal client or actually setting up your exercise regimen or prepping for your week of meals so that you can't, you're not fogged over and you can focus on increasing revenue. So there's, you know, that is so important to do those quarterly plans. And yes, there's flexibility, but to be able to really do that. And then how do we practice it? How do we make sure that now we've, we've identified, visualized plan, now we gotta do it. So that's, you know, we make, that's, we have things in place for accountability, but we're also being accountability with our meditation and keeping that high vibe, which we cannot keep all the time, but we want to be accountable to how, what does get me in high vibe, right? We've all had right. down moments. So I, I noticed that one of the uh, kind of key words that you had just said was uh, pattern. And mm -hmm. I think that sometimes when you're looking at patterns, um, going forward, but you're looking backwards at the patterns. It's like uh, those are things that you can, you know, in the checklist. Why am I feeling this way? Why am I feeling, say, out of alignment? It's like, well, it's uh, I'm going to use a golf analogy um, because I'm going through it myself, and that's one of those things. It's like, you know, you are so easy to go back into old habits, right? You know, and if you point them out, that I mean, if you're in where I'm at the best thing you can do is take a video of your swing. And it's the one thing you don't want to do when you know things are wrong. You just don't want to look at it. And then you look at it and you go, wow, it's like that diagnosis. It's like right. that, that it's like the kind of that evidence. If you have some sort of evidence, like I haven't been to the gym in a week. Why am I feeling like this? Why am I not? It's all that, which we just talked about, but the patterns you go back and you can look at them. It's like, slowly eliminating those patterns where you're you're on in alignment and then you pop out of alignment and just bring it back in right and, and don't beat yourself up you just make that adjustment it's why they have coaches in football it's why they have halftime it's in basketball and every sport it's because they can see something from a little bit different perspective than you might be able to it's like frogs in a pan or, or in a pot right. a boiling pot you know they don't know it but they're getting hot right <laughs> you know? And, right, um, exactly. And it's so helpful to have someone there. And, you know, I've worked with coaches for years and it just for that reason, because we can serve our clients very well and be that for them and have that 30,000 foot view um, and ask those good questions that are going to draw out and help them to move forward. And we need that as well. And that, you know, so don't make any mistake that you know, coaches have coaches because that's a, that is a really, really important thing because habits are familiar. So whether or not they are helpful, they're familiar, they're easy. So that is why, you know, if people don't have a strong reason why they want to lose weight, get in shape, if it's only for the reunion or the wedding, they go right back. And often it's that yo-yo or the same thing with a you know business strategy, why someone will have gangbuster enrollments and then um, you know, whatever's going on, maybe it's an unworthiness feeling, they'll then, you know, not be able to repeat that. So that's why it's important to have somebody that you can bounce off of that has a framework to walk through and really help you with that, you know, how do you get back on track? That's the last piece of our, of our framework is that SOS piece, which is, we call it the three S's, structure, system, scheduling, over stress. So it's, we're gonna, how do we set up our environment? We already know what we want. How do we set up our environment to feel that way? So that, you know, if you're gonna do a yoga class, maybe you'll do a power yoga at home. 
can you set up your area so as soon as you're done with your your work day you don't have to scramble right so how is and who's around you are you surrounding mm -hmm. yourself with people who are lifting you up or who are saying oh you could never do that that's really important i'm not saying a break up with your partner or divorce your family but be careful who you talk to when you have these visionary ideas because mm -hmm. sometimes people just don't get it and they're not being mean but they are kind of like what are you talking about no one could ever do that so just share with you know come onto keith's page share here on his page reach out to people that are going to help say yeah anything's possible you have an idea let's hear it let's brainstorm and see how we can help you make that happen yeah i think that saying uh the say yes component is it's mm. a huge thing huge. you know um you know it's interesting um you know million dollar stories you know the heart stories the mm -hmm. transformational stories it's not about the pain it's coming out of the pain for for me um would you i mean i mean you talked about your um other health business and then coming offline and or going going online before a pandemic but could you tell me why you're doing what you do absolutely i have ha i have a lifelong uh, you know, as we all do, just of sort of overcome stories with with illness and got into the health and wellness industry from my own growing up in and out of hospitals. And that just, you know, that helped me. I ended up doing that. And I always, I lived, I grew up outside of Manhattan, so suburbs of Manhattan. And even in those early days, I always worked with uh, now looking back, visionary leaders. So the clients would come to me, they would go be going into Manhattan. And I was even in my 20s, sort of life coaching without knowing it, right? So they were coming for, I was a one-on-one -on -one elite personal training center and they were coming for workout and nutrition, but it's one-on-one. -on -one. So now there's they're talking about everything. And I was basically coaching. So I was doing things I didn't even realize, right? Then there's there's other pieces. I was an elementary school teacher. I have a master's in education and administration. I left because I had Crohn's disease for 20 years. And um, I, I left on a medical leave and came to Vermont. I was like, oh, how long has this been going on? I was offered a, a coveted administrative position that I turned down. And my principal said, you're not coming back at all, are you? But I had discovered Vermont and another life. Um, and really, I'm going to skip ahead because this, you know, had kids, et cetera, and was really loving helping people and still continued to attract kind of the same people. Started working with a coach, opened a fitness studio. I was driving all over the place. I was like teaching group classes and going in home and it was crazy. And the, the, that coach was like, you need to open a space. And... I was like, okay. And the funny thing, Keith, was that before that, I had created a 100-page website, and I was going online. And I don't even know. I think it was just that I saw this ad, and I still couldn't fathom the online at that point and how this was all going to roll out. And I stepped away from that. So I was already there. I was already getting traffic. I was already getting you know, recognized and article writing and all this. And I completely shifted to just this teeny tiny town of 800 people in Killington, Vermont, to open a fitness studio year round. And um, so my MO was always like, oh yeah, you don't think it's possible? I'm gonna do it. So when you are a prover, it's very stressful. Oh, yeah. And I don't live my life that way anymore. But somebody would say, like I, I was told I could never have kids, I have two kids. Oh really? Uh, okay, I'll show you, right? So I love my children, I would not ever trade them in. But doing things to prove people wrong is just doesn't serve us, right? And that's what happened when I said earlier about the studio. So it was great. It was a great, like I, I have great memories. And what happened was that burnout. What happened was depression. What happened was, you know, being up and wonderful for clients and being down and talk about out of alignment not available for my kids, not available for my family because I was so depressed and stressed. And, you know, you have to keep the whole thing rolling all the time. And I was hiring and, you know, it just all of it was just not aligned with who I am. Um, the helping part was, but doing that type of business wasn't aligned. And I, I really came to a very talk about dark low point and it just, 
it was not good and I had to to shut down. So I came back from, I went to visit my mom with my daughter and on the way back from the airport, I said to my husband, we're closing in six weeks. And he was like, what? And I had already started online. I was already, you know, the online income was already beginning to overtake and we were already pulling from other places with the studio. And I was like, we gotta get rid of it. Um, because at that point, there was a there was a point where everything was rocking and rolling, but to keep it that way, I, that was not the type of work I wanted. The hustle and grind is not who I am. And that was what was necessary. And that got me very depressed. And then that, that whole spiral downward. So we did that. I've never had a regret. I know that people were upset and I felt um, the, the connections were wonderful. And that was what we needed to do. So as I went forward, I started to go back to still working with high performers over 40. And it was geared at, you know, self-care and it was, you know, exercise, nutrition, mindset. But what I saw was really the people were not coming for self-care because the people who are lost and disconnected were, how do I make my business work? How do I make more money? How do I serve my students? And so I needed to shift because I was working with visionary leaders. So I really right. needed to speak to the people I was working with who were like me and like I once was, who needed that transformation, who needed to understand that you can work the way you want to, you can live the way you want to, you can line up, but since you try to prove to everyone else, you don't even know what that is. So I came to this transformational coaching for visionary leaders because I went through my own transformation and truly Keith, what it was, was embracing me. So I just had photos done this weekend. That's when my hair is all different colors. I wore a red sparkly dress and that was me. I always felt like I needed to like wear a business suit. And so that all of that, ever since I stepped into be owning who I am and living my values, it has just been gangbusters. And I want it to be that way for mm -hmm. everyone. You know, I can't, I, you know, for those people who are ready for that, who are searching, who are hurting, who are, who know there's another way, but don't know what it is. I want this for them too, because it's fun and it's freedom and fulfillment and it's whatever your core desires are. So yeah. I know that's long winded, but it's, mm -hmm. it just lights me up. That's really the uh, bottom line. And the cool thing is it also uh, supports myself and my lifestyle and beyond, you know, the ability to give back and, and that didn't happen overnight. I'm 50 years old and I've been in business for over 20, for about 25 years. So it takes time, but having that support and somebody who can pave the way and put the lights on and hand out those waters along the way is super helpful. Right. You said something in there that I just went, I almost jumped out of my seat. And um, uh, I say when I work with people on their story, because it's all about the belief that you, mm. it, it, it means something. And I, the, I call it the my light bulb. That light bulb moment is um, at the, the core program that I have is it's own your story for freedom. Own your story. Yeah. When you when you you can tell it, I can find it. You can tell it. But until you own it. You got to you know, own it and then you believe you can believe that that story is worth it. You know, like you say, it's like, yeah, imagine the first guy who learned how to tie his shoes. He right. could teach, you know, if you know how to do that, you can help somebody else tie their shoes. You know, just use that analogy just and so on and so on and so on. I love that yeah. analogy because you don't have to have this like huge, like earth shattering, oh my gosh, you know, she does this and Keith is helping people really get succinct with their stories, which obviously I can I can use help with. Um, what you have, first of all, all of us are a gift and I truly believe that. And then you have talents that are unique to you. And maybe you do that for a lifetime or a season, but there's something that each of us is able to do, to teach, to value, to provide. So if that's, if, you know, if you're feeling that way, know that there are others like you. I was just on another call and there were people being like, I don't even, I'm, I feel like a unicorn in life and I feel like one here too. And like then other people were connecting and saying, oh, don't worry. You know, basically you're not alone there. I'm a unicorn too. And they were just sharing what their what their business was, how they came at things. And it was just know that there's your tribes out there as long as you show up as you. 
Yeah, show up as you. That's a that's a great way to put it. Another thing that you said a, a little while back, I didn't want to interrupt. Was yeah. the um, is the uh, the box? We're talking Ooh. about the the box. I have a client. Um, this is another um, evidence that the uh, like the people that we work with are they come in all shapes and sizes, all ages, all walks of life. Uh, this company, um, I was doing some good old fashioned business development with them about a year ago mm -hmm. and I went to their place. They've been in, they've been in business since 1975. They've rolled with the changes. They've got adaptation of engineering. They've got adaptation of uh, adaptation of technology and so on and so on. It's just an incredible story to me. And um, I went through, you know, like unpacking their story because it's a long story, but it's, they've got, you talk about pivots, 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 and pivots. And, um, and one day I just got this out of him. He says, you know, I don't really, I don't like the term think outside of the box because in my world, there is no box. Mm. It was, it was pretty, pretty profound. And he, he just said it like, no, this is what I believe. And yeah. I don't, I'm sure that he didn't, uh, you know, originate that, but it's a, it's a good way to think it's because we jump, yes. if we got to think outside of the box, what that says to me in the logic world is that at one point I was either born in the box or I climbed into the box and now I can't get out. And, mm -hmm. um, so think outside of the box. If you're thinking outside of the box, you maybe you think you're still stuck in the box. I mean, it's just this weird sort of like visual analogy that I, I conjure up. I put something visual with everything, you know. So yeah. I can't, I can't help it, um, and that's part of the story thing. And um, yeah, it's 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 really really interesting. Thank you for telling me that story because yeah. that's that to me is when I, I I teach people about the art of listening, and when I get in a conversation with someone. Um, and they have any doubt about their story, but I don't really push them into it. And all of a sudden they get into it and they mm -hmm. say, and they go, well, maybe I do. I've, you know, you can discover sometimes with someone who's struggling with whether or not they're, they have that value mm -hmm. or if they, if they have something that anyone else would be interested in. If you listen uh, good enough, if you want to call it that, if you listen with I call it intent and honesty, mm -hmm. they may reveal their passion, and they also may reveal their audience in the same tiny little conversation. Um, and that happens sometimes. It's pretty remarkable, and that's when I, when when you can kind of suggest to them that look, there are a lot of people that would love to hear your story. You have any idea how you would help them by just telling what you just told me? And they go, and and it's it's life changing. It's it's really really amazing feeling for me to see that light bulb go off. Yeah. And it's it's just not all about the cash and prizes. It's about right. Uh, that really yeah. getting in with someone. And you know, I think what happens for for a lot of us is our experience is our own. So we kind of are like, oh, that's no big deal. Oh, I beat Crohn's disease. I don't have evidence of it. You know, I have only three quarters of my intestine. So what? That was a long time ago. And then somebody's like, what? Uh, you know, that, what did you just say? And I'll tell you another thing um, that's interesting that I'm kind of like, oh, you know, I've been rolling with it and I, I do look for silver linings. But when people, I just had an old client text me yesterday, like, oh my God, I just heard I crashed my mountain bike seven weeks ago and broke L2, L4 on my tailbone. So I'm at a standing desk right now. My husband, three weeks later, crashed and broke seven ribs, collarbone, and separated shoulder. And, you know, we're like, we have two teenagers. They're amazing. We're rocking and rolling through. We're supporting each other. We like roll with the flow. And we're, you know, we've, I finally, you know, I'm accepting how people made meals. I'm, I'm healing really well. That's why I went back to the studio. But I forget because to me, it's like, okay, this happened. I can't do anything about it. Like I could ride slower next time and not try to show off for my son. That would be good, you know, but I can't change it. So to me, when people are reacting that way, I'm like, oh yeah. They're like, oh, it's a major injury. I'm like, oh yeah. So I what, the, the, I'm being long-winded again to say that you, each of us has an experience in our life that we've probably sort of discounted or have kind of brushed under the rug as no big deal, but other people have not had that experience and that experience has given you skills, has added value. Even if it's somebody going through something similar that you're able to say, 
I know what you're going through. I, you can talk to like somebody could actually talk to you and it's not somebody who's going to try to say something because they really don't understand. So just don't discount yourself or disqualify that your story isn't whatever, because it's, it is everyone's story. And what, like you said, when you delve in each and every person has a story, everyone. So some people are like, oh, my story is too bad. Other people are like, oh, well, I didn't really struggle growing up. I had a really good growing up. What is my story? Right. But you have one. So I love, thank you for saying that because, um, seeing what lights people up also really lights me up as well. Did, did you ever watch uh, Seinfeld? Yeah. So I don't know if you remember the episode when George quit his job and then he, I think he was going to go back in and pretend that he never quit. And so in between somewhere or another, he was sitting on Jerry's floor going, kind of coming up with other ideas for his career. Well, mm -hmm. maybe, you know how I say those interesting things during the baseball game. So maybe I could be a, an announcer for the, for, you know, maybe I could be a broadcaster. And, and then Jerry says, well, that's, that's, that's usually reserved for people that are in broadcasting. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like when you're just like coming up with ideas. And right. I, have to, I have to say, when I first came into the online space, I was one of the seekers. That's how I'm, I'm an advocate for those folks. It kind mm -hmm. of, if they don't have their act together, you know, you can spend a lot of money. For me, I was trying to get someone to rescue me. And I thought it could come with a price tag. And I was like, here, uh, here's my, give me a plan B. I'll, right. pay, I'll pay anything for the plan B. Um, and then I kept going back to what was working, you know, in my life and my, in my skills and my, um, it wasn't, we would never call it a following, but it, it was a following uh, to in a different, uh, you know, in a different um, genre, a different audience uh, format. Uh, what mm -hmm. am I trying to say that, you know, not, it wasn't an online following, let's just right, say. Right, right, right. Um, but I felt discarded and I felt disrespected and I felt, but I honestly, if I go and I own my story, I was trying to throw money at a solution and I was trying right. to have somebody, you know, so I have to own that part of it and I have, to, and, and which I have and go, but I wasn't the only one. And I saw lots of people come in and get confused and get upsold and get a, a abused if they let them. And, you know, sometimes if you have the resources, it's good to, find it around but but if you're really honest with yourself you'll be able to tap into something that really does work for you a hundred percent and i think that that's kind of part of my mission you know i have a facebook group uh it's called the million dollar story ninjas i want everybody to come in and be a ninja a story ninja and and, and just kind of check it out check out if they especially if you doubt that you've got a million dollar story i i can promise that you that you do um but uh, when I first got in um, to, to that group, I, I wanted to go global because of the power of our new platform. Platform was the word I was looking for a minute ago. Mm, okay. um, and you know, my, my numbers are growing in a little bit of a slower pace. You know, part of it might have something to do with the 10-year hiatus on Facebook that I had, but it is what it is. Yeah. And, um, uh, but I have people from everywhere from Antarctica so I'm looking for someone from Antarctica, and and um, my client that I mentioned a little while before used to be on the radio with people in Antarctica on a daily basis. So maybe he can help me out. <laughs> so. I bet he can. That's awesome. That is fabulous to reach so far and wide because really, so many people are stressed and they they just are feeling overworked, fogged out, unsure, and especially in these times, that's what I've seen is a lot of people are are seeking their mm -hmm. purpose are saying, well, wait a minute, nothing is guaranteed, right? And so I do want to gain clarity and align with my core values and, and get my life back without feeling frustrated and overwhelmed and enjoy my kids and mm -hmm. you know, not get caught up in these. And it's interesting. And I love that your client said that, that in his world, there are no boxes and he's very lucky. And I love that sort of flip on it. Um, and I think that's what we're working for. I think a lot of people allow themselves to be stuffed into these boxes. And I had somebody design my, redesign my logo recently. And it's funny because the way he designed it is the AL are like bursting out of a box. And I had not told him to do that. Mm. But I was like, oh my gosh, you know, you just did 
you know, exactly what I'm thinking. But you're right. If we think that we're in there and that's separate, it's like, how can we start to, you know, reach out and like feel what that feels like and then, you know, feel what that feels like and then break that box down, send it off to the recycling center and, mm -hmm. you know, burst out because you're going to feel bigger, right? You're, and I mean, just as you expand, as who you are expands. And, mm -hmm. and that's really, you know, without sacrifice. So it's great. You are reaching worldwide. I know I spoke with Anna um, from Iceland, and I know that you've got her oh. coming up as a guest as well, which will be amazing. You know, mm -hmm. the work you're doing is incredible because we do all have a story. But for mm -hmm. me, I feel like I have different stories at different parts of my life. Um, that have led me here. So well, I'm like, how can I bring it all together for um, the last 50 years? I mean, I, I'm so such so old school. Is that we start? It's whether we do it on the three by fives and stick with yep. the three by fives, but we start with the three by fives. So it's like okay. I pulled the pulled the random out, it, um, and that was just one of the random ones. Oh, how funny! And that's <laughs> funny because I that's what I always say, and we do that. People don't come to me necessarily for weight loss or health, but we bring that in because. Without your health, you don't have anything. I was on the couch. I lost a month with this uh, injury. I couldn't move. I don't even remember. I have a concussion. Um, so without your health, it doesn't matter. There's nothing. You can't do anything. So all the worrying in the world is just stressing us out and causing poor health. So that's that's really amazing that that popped out there, Keith. But you do have you, you do have uh, the. You know, I've got a long story. There's, you yeah. know, the, and the thing is, it's like you've got different audiences. You've got yeah. a different, you know, you have it. So you might walk into the room and you got a, that's why I have these things. It's like there's piles of, you know, it's like um, Steve Martin did a, a really great thing on the Let's Get Small record mm -hmm. when he, when he had prepared for the plumbers convention and he, had, you know, it was, you know, it was, it was the wrong audience. It was like right. no, nobody was getting his jokes about the sprinkler heads or something like that. So, you know, it's just, it really catches right. me. Those, those types of things are really, really great examples for me. It's like, if you walk in and, and uh, you know, you talked about your struggles in health with the uh, Crohn's disease, you know, it's like, if you, you could, somebody in the audience might say, you know, I don't think I can do this. I have this thing. And it's like, wait a second. She did. May, it, 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 and then you have this connection that's like un it's like uh, it's it's a it's a it's a ground level, um, almost a uh, it's almost a spiritual connection that you uh, have 100%. with people. It's like a synchronistic kind of like yesterday when we were messaging. Exactly. That, that was right? pretty. That, that was, was crazy, and that happened to me with another meeting yesterday. I had to push it back fifteen minutes, and I messaged the gal and said, "Hey, you know." Um, I need to reschedule for 15 minutes later. Just message me if this doesn't work and I will figure it out. Mm -hmm. She did not read my message and later messaged me, can we please move the meeting back 15 minutes? I said to her, I cannot even believe you just sent me that message. Mm -hmm. So it is that synchronicity. Yeah. Um, and as you say that, I was at, at an event at a dinner several years ago in Scottsdale, Arizona, and I was talking to a young gal who was married, no kids yet. And we're talking about, you know, my business and background and my health background and my journey with not being able to have kids or being told I couldn't have kids um, mm -hmm. because it wasn't like I even tried yet. I was told, yeah, don't, you're never gonna be able to support a pregnancy. And I did a two year, I'm telling her I did this two year, you know, diet and meditation and this whole thing. And, um, and my business was not about that. That's what stood out to her. Guess what? She just had a baby last week. Oh my God. So it's so funny. Like you said, you don't know when you're sharing your story. It might not be about your business. It might be somebody's listening and their son has Crohn's disease and is unable to function. And wow, you are totally functioning and, and healthy and other than crashing your mountain bike. So I need to find out what in the world that is. So yeah. You got to get out there and share, and and yeah. don't be shy because then you're, then you are staying, keeping that gift closed when other people are ready to open it up. Yeah, if you live it, you can teach it. Yeah. I believe that. Hundred yeah. percent. Well, Amy, I I want to be respectful of your time, and I could talk to you all day. I feel and, the same way. <laughs> um, I I why don't you uh, give us a, a a minute where tell us where we can find you and where where to where to where to find you. 
The bet, thank you so much, Keith. We would love to have you join us in our Freedom and Fulfillment Accelerator community on Facebook. That is a great place to just pop in. If this is resonating with you, we really do marry the woo-woo with science and strategy. We have a lot of great folks in there. And in there, we our goal is to lift each other up, to support one another. We wholeheartedly believe in collaboration over competition and the structure is changing so that you can promote yourself. And so it's a place that I'm not the be all and end all, right? Um, and I want folks to be exposed to people like you, Keith, other people who maybe someone else is gonna resonate with. So join us there if this is resonating with you and you wanna kind of start exploring. We have a free workshop on Monday, the 21st, and I can share that link later. And that's really going through like the number one way frustrated heart-centered entrepreneurs simplify their lives and increase their income and impact without sacrificing themselves or their families, because that's, we know we'd end up doing that. So that would be the best way. You can, you can certainly find me on Instagram at Amy Lewis Inc or Facebook at Amy Lewis Inc. That's my, those are my pages. But I would say join the Freedom and Fulfillment Accelerator group because you're going to get the most value there and you're going to be exposed to the most like-minded people of all walks of life. So that would be my rec my best recommendation. Okay. Well, and what we, we, we can do is on on for what we can move this uh, this video replay around and we can we can tag it up. So yeah, you can we can no put problem. some some links and things like that on it. So um, Excellent. Well, uh, Amy Lewis, I, I really appreciate you coming and joining me from Vermont. I'll tell you briefly my Vermont stories. Yes, my I can't my, wait. <laughs> my, very, my very first car in California, I was staying at some place in Newport Beach, Costa mm. Mesa to be exact. And I was coming up to, to Hollywood every day with a pocket full of quarters. That's one of part of my story is that's what we did back then. We would come into the phone booth and you've, you know, so I was doing that, but, um, the guys who I was staying at their place in Costa Mesa, they, they the brothers, they worked at a at a, a car auction in Oceanside, California. And when I made my first thousand dollars at my job in my editing, um, I got a job as a driver, and I didn't have a car, you know. So that was that was <laughs> well, that's how we did things back then. Yeah, but hey, that's um, a big visionary, isn't it? <laughs> well, they had a car, you know. I just happened to be getting a job at, with the best film editor and commercials at in the country at that time, oh, I did, wow. I, which I didn't know. And uh, that was when mentorship was a little bit different game. But anyway, the long story short is that I said, at my first thousand dollars, I said, get me a car, sight unseen. They brought me this sob from, from Vermont. It was from Vermont and oh, it was, it lasted me a year. I mean, but it was, it was a great car, but it, it, it was near death uh, when I got it, but it, it drove solid for a year. So that was very important for me. <laughs> that is awesome. But just if it, just a little buying used cars, you don't want to buy one from Vermont just because of all of the salt damage. We learned that also. We bought a minivan here. That is hysterical. Yeah. That's well, I'm glad it worked for you. I am so grateful to spend, have spent this time with you, Keith. Thank well, thanks so, so much, Amy. So uh, I'm just going to sign off for our group at watching the replay or watching us live. Uh, thank you for joining us. This is a, a, a great episode of the Million Dollar Story series. Uh, my name is Keith Salmon, and you can look for me in the Million Dollar Story Ninja group, where we'll, um, you know, you may ask the question, you know, I, I'll ask the question, do you think you have a million dollar story? And you may say, well, I don't know if I have one. And I'll, if we have a conversation, I can prove to you that you do. And uh, you have the opportunity to change the world that way. So Amy, thanks so much. And and we will uh, be in touch where we're, you speak my language. I really yeah. appreciate it. Likewise, okay. thank you so much. Have a terrific day. You bye -bye. too.